season one of the Canadian Ed Leadership Show is in the books. I started this with the idea that I would be interested in highlighting just so much of the great educators and the education system that exists across our country and to either reinforce or maybe for some establish the notion that we indeed are offering world-class education to our children. This is not something that I just uh, think of anecdotally, but I think the word is out that Canada really does have a great education. And, you know, for those of us in the middle of it, sometimes that's not easy to see because we're dealing with all of the great challenges that still exist. So this is not about Ignoring the fact that there are many great challenges, We're, we don't have it right perfect yet. We never will. I mean, if you're a parent, you never get parenting perfect, <laughs> and, and you probably are harder on yourself than you should. So as somebody who gets to see this from a slight bit of distance, yet still works closely in schools, I think I, I felt like I was the person to, to want to celebrate this. So thank you to all of you that listened to the various shows. I hope that there was you know one or two that really stuck with you and I've been continuing to highlight these people because I think there's so much in there in all of these conversations that are uh, valuable to everyone. I wanted to also make sure that I covered the entire country and we kind of sort of did that. Uh, there were two provinces that we didn't get highlighted and my vow is to uh, make sure that that's taken care of in season two, which will start sometime in January. So thank you again for the listeners. Thank you for all the great guests I had, um, their willingness to give up their time and their expertise to share. What I wanted to do, I thought it'd be a great little holiday gift, is to uh, listen to some of their shares that they provide at the end of my podcast. So I always ask them questions about what they're reading, what they're listening to, as well as what they're watching. And what they're reading and listening to tends to be more professional. What they're watching tends to be more personal, just for fun. This is perhaps my holiday gift to you is to hear these recommendations. Maybe you'll find the time to add some of these to your list of things you want to read or listen to or watch. If you're listening to this, this may be a little bit difficult in that I'm just stringing together short clips of their recommends. And so you don't, there's no way of identifying who each individual is. And maybe that matters. Maybe that doesn't. So you can either watch it on YouTube or I will give you a list in order of the various people that are sharing, starting off with those sharing their favorite book or podcast. So in the following order, you're going to be hearing from Chris Kennedy, Janesse Moffat, Amos Fodchuk, Jennifer Cassa, Todd, Paul Corrigan, Lisa Bowles, Cameron Hausman, Corey Haley, Melissa Burns, Brian Zoomless, Bonnie Stewart, Sean Nosek, Tom D'Amico. Randy McLean, Simone Gessler, Robert Martellacci, and Dominic Sculia. Take a little break after that, and I'll let you know who's sharing their favorite shows. So again, enjoy the show today. Really enjoying Adam Grant on, on Rethinking. I like that one. I like Good Sport. It's also through the TED Audio Collective, which is a is has a different some different thinking around sports. And then more in the, you know, the one I, 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 another one I listen to every week is just Freakonomics, the Freakonomics podcast, because I really enjoy that one as well. I, I go to the little free libraries and are too busy all the time. And I find the oddest book and I tripped upon a, the Judy Bloom series that I read. As oh, fun. And so I've been rereading those and I'm on, are they gone? It's me, Margaret. And so as funny as that sounds, I think for me, what I found by reading some of those books that I can recall informative in my teenage years. What I'm noticing reading them in, you know, the next half over the 50 more is just a, a reminder, right, of that universality of youth and adolescence and reading those stories and, and listening to, you know, and, and even remembering who I was at that age and stage and thinking that there's still relevance now all these years later. So that's, that's kind interesting. Of a fun yeah, that's been a fun little read. That was a nice surprise. And I think, you know, on a professional front, I I did pick up uh, a book that's been on my shelf. And I think I've moved in about five or six times different offices. But I don't know if I've sat down and actually read it cover to cover. And that is Fierce Conversation, Susan Scott. And so mm. our team is walking through that book this, this fall. And so really enjoying at this age and stage of my career in a professional way, looking at the book of yours conversations and thinking about how it applies to me in my current context and really enjoying it. 
Well, the book that I'm consuming right now is right in front of me. I, I love podcasts, but I'll, I'll Hold be it brief. Up. Yeah. So this here oh. is one of those, it's one of those little renegade books that I don't even know who it's published by. It's barely held together. My friend, Mark, that I already spoke to gave me this book and I've, I, I should probably give it back to him because he gave it to me six months ago, but I've easily read it four times in that period. And it really just, the, the name of the, the book is Systems Convening a crucial form of leadership in the 21st century. And it's just like this pervasive, like wow. it's this less a little countercultural revolutionary creed occur around how to, how to, how to not just activate communities, but to connect them and harness them and then get out of their way. So that's a book I'm loving. Recommend it. If you can even get your hands on it, that's a beauty. Oh, well, as a teacher librarian and uh, the moderator of a book club, my students made me promise that I would read the Shatter Me series by Tara Mathy. I'm sure I'm saying her name wrong, but some of our students are Persian and she's a Persian author and they are in love with her. So I need to do that. I read the first one. I'll keep reading it. I'm also reading the Legend Born series. Again, YA, because I need to be able to go back and, and recommend books to kids. For my own personal book club, I'm reading the Midnight Library. And my husband and I, because we were going on our Ireland trip, we were lit, we started to listen to Bono's book, Surrender. And that was okay. really cool because we would listen to him talk about a little seaside town called, called House. And we're actually mm. on the train en route. Yeah, so that was very super cool. cool. But the problem with the great detective stories is there are only so many of them. So there's no more Sherlock Holmes, but there's a lot of fan fiction. And two of my favorite detectives are Sherlock Holmes and that guy by the name of Father Brown, a little less known figure, but oh, he's been, there's been a TV show lately. Yeah. The fan fiction book off Kickstarter that combined, it's called the, the clergyman and the detective. And it combined the two of them and, and created some fan fiction stories. And I, I thought that was amazing. And just, just a way to keep these stories going. The podcast that, that has my attention these days is by a guy by the name of Arthur Brooks. And I would highly recommend it. I really would. Other, other than this podcast, of course, but uh, <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah. The, because he talks about how to properly disagree with each other. He, he's an American and, and he, he would, I guess, be call himself a conservative, but his parents were, parents are professors in Seattle. And so they are, they're very much liberals. And so. He grew up in this environment where that was okay. And now since 2016, he's seen this dichotomous world in the U S where liberals and conservatives hate each other. And, and he's saying, how can we disagree with each other without, without being angry? And, and what is the art of disagreement and getting over this polarization idea? What we're reading right now, I just started reading was a white benevolence. It's, it's a collection of works. The subtitle is racism and colonial violence in the helping professions. So something from social work point of view, education, all, all across the systems and the helping system. So it's a good read. It's a little bit heavier, as you can imagine. And, but it's something as a system that the Pemina Trail is the leadership group we're, we're reading as we're going into our fall works. So. so in my house right now, I've got a toddler. So Bunnies on the Bus is a big one that, that we've been reading a lot these days. If anyone has somebody under five years old, it is a great resource for bedtime, for alleviating tantrums, all things of that nature. Uh, so feel free to hit that one up. Also, uh, speaking of Katina Pollock, she recently edited a book titled How Principals Spend Their Time. And uh, it provides okay. some really cool um, international perspectives on the role of the principal and effective ways that principals are spending their time to support students and to support folks in their communities across the world. So I've found that a really interesting read as well. I'm revisiting an old classic professionally. I got one right inside the black box, which is some Dylan William action coming. Yeah. We're kind of revisiting some assessment, Little assessment stuff. Lately. Sure. And I know it's old, but I still think that it's got some, some good stuff there. Personally, I'm always, I'm always reading a book. The one that I'm reading is Bill, Bill Morneau's new book. I just came out with, I think it's called Where to Now. Talking about government and, and the role of, of people coming in to government and the trappings of that. And, and it's kind of interesting to me as a former high school social studies teacher, <laughs> the inner workings of, of, of governments are always really interesting. So those are two things that I'm reading. We are reading <laughs> Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets out loud with our kids. So that's been fun to reread. There you go. Yeah. Experience yeah. through their eyes. 
And then just to stay on top of things in the business sense and, and helping me make those connections between what is happening at, like it, in the economy and in the world, the business world of esports, there's uh, a podcast called The Business of Esports. And I really enjoy listening to that one because you're hearing all the latest developments, trends, all that kind of stuff that's happening in the business world. And then right. I reflect back on that to see how does this impact our students and how can we use these things to our advantage? So I'm at the radio studio sitting in the in the waiting room and there's this this lady in the waiting room with me and uh, we start a conversation. I said, oh yeah, like, what are you in for? And what's your topic? And, <laughs> and her name was Keely. And so Keely has on her lap some books and we start talking and she's here to talk about her book. And so she gave me a copy of her book and it's called Make Money Your Thing. And she talks about, she wrote this book for women. And so I started talking to her about in the Calgary, in our district, we also made women in leadership committee and were helping women who are aspiring in leadership, like possibly to move forward as a principal or assistant principal, what have you. We bring them together and we talk about some of the challenges that women have that us men never had as we moved up the ranks, right? And so she wrote this book all about uh, money. And so she said, you know, Brian, I really wrote the book for women. I said, hey, I, got, I need to understand what, <laughs> you know, what they're learning and stuff. So that is, you know, that's the that's book cool. I'll be reading next. But the second book that I want to share. I am reading a book by Sarah Rose Cavanaugh, who's somebody I met on Twitter years ago, who's written a few books. But this one is called Mind Over Monsters. And it is a really smart and interesting take on sort of what we're calling the teen mental health crisis. What's happening societally that is driving so many mental health challenges that kids are having. It, it very much focuses more on the mental health side than the mental illness side and actually kind of okay. reflects that as a, we have some societal problems that, you know, are, are hard for, for kids to navigate. I have teens myself. And so I'm finding that a really interesting deep dive into a topic near and dear to my heart. I have been really leveraging my audible. Yeah. What to read too, but with some of my drive time. And so they've been doing that, the heavy dive into biographies. And, and I seem to be drawn, it seems to be these head artists. So the last, the last one that I did was Horton Light, the Canadian and coming out. So I've been spending some time, you know, trying to, trying to not just think about education related matters in that, in that space. I also double down on CBC radio. Like that's, that's, I spent a lot of time listening there. I think we get information. Those are a couple of my go-tos. And I, I just finished reading Michael Fullen and Joanne Quinn's book, The Drivers, Transforming Learning for Students and School Systems. I've got several leadership books that I've, I've just finished reading as well that I'll be used this year in presentations with some of our staff. I'm trying to link them to the concept of hope. We have a spiritual theme in our board as a Catholic district, and this year we're focusing on hope. So Critical Hope by it's Carrie, Carrie Green, Green. Real Hope, How Hope Drives Positive Actions That Lead to Business and Leadership uh, in the Real World. And an interesting one that's called Don't Blame the Lettuce. And it's uh, insights to help yeah. you grow as a leader and nurture your workplace culture. And that's by Randy Greiser and the, the Achieve Institute of Leadership. That's a really interesting book because it's, it's really common sense when you think of many people like gardening. And if your right. lettuce is turning out, you don't blame the lettuce. You go back and you look at the soil conditions, you look at the sun, you look at how you water. There's so many great analogies to education. So I look forward to using some of that. And I'm, and I'm, I'm waiting for the release of Andy Hargreaves and Dennis Shirley's new book, The Age of Identity. Who do our kids think they are and how do we help them belong? Lots of my work in the last two to three years has been with an equity focus. So I'm, I'm looking forward to bringing that book to my, to my learning. And I have four other books I'm reading. I'm reading, I've just ordered actually, Indigenomics, as well as No Surrender Lands Remains Indigenous, Clearing the Plains. And the, the other one is Self-Compassionate for in Educators. There's no more group of perfectionists I've ever met than a group of educators. Sometimes <laughs> we have right. to, we have to acknowledge it. We, we, we're trying to do perfect things in an imperfect world and an imperfect model. 
I am reading Positive Intelligence by Shirzad Shamin. It really looks at sort of that mental fitness and what are our judges and our saboteurs. I'm actually reading it for the second time okay. because it's something that I continue to go back to. It's really about creating high-performing teams and, and digging down into true potential. So I really like the premise behind it. Comes with an app and some mental fitness exercises you can do. So I'm just kind of coming back to it now. I've gone back and I've watched Marshall McLuhan's podcasts or, or, or interviews and lectures that are just fascinating because some things still apply today. He envisioned the internet back in the 60s. I, I read uh, a book by Dr. Defoe, Hanley Defoe, or The Stor Storm, talking about how to be resilient at difficult times. Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday, another great book I read, and he uses a number of examples of uh, leaders who uh, were successful when they parked their ego and, and leaders who were not successful when ego got in the way and really good lessons coming out of that book. And then I read a book by Desmond Cole, The Skin We're In, and I found that book really powerful as well. Uh, he's a local journalist in the city of Toronto and uh, he has had a, is an advocate, a black advocate, and he had a number of examples of stories I've read, but he provided insights I didn't have and prior to knowing from his perspective, and that was a great book. And for fun, I love reading historical fiction. I read Leon Uris's Redemption, and it's the second part sequel to the first book he wrote, which is called Trinity, but fun. This episode is brought to you by Advanced Learning Partnerships, also known as ALP. We are a professional learning consulting group that serves communities across North America. We are partners, designers, and agents for change. You can learn about more about the work we do at alplearn.com. And now back to the show. Well, I hope you found one or two new reads, new listens that you want to add to your list. And now we're going to hear from the following who are going to share just their favorite shows that they're watching, most of these streaming shows, some of them movies, and maybe over the holiday, you'll have a chance to take in some of these. So in the following order, they are John Malloy, Lisa Walsh, Peter Barron, Katina Papoulkas, Jamil Aziz, Dave Eberwine, Brenda Sherry, Andy Mead, Michael Keckley, and Alec Koros. Enjoy. I don't know if you've ever heard of this one show called Your Honor. It's a series, two seasons. Yeah. And I just Brian finished Cranston. season two with Brian Cranston. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. I wish there'd be a season three. Just finished that and loved every second of it. Yeah. And starting season good. three of Murders in the Building. Oh, it Black Mirror. My husband and I have been going through the new Black Mirror se season. Oh. Which is, some of them are kind it's of intense. dark. But it is it's intense. Very me, but you know I, I couldn't get through. I got through about three episodes, and I thought, like, okay, I, I'm, but maybe, maybe I should pick and choose them or something because I, I was like, whoa, this is heavy stuff. You fascinating, know, though. It is fascinating, and it's so creative, and and things that you know you might yeah. have contemplated or thought about at one point in time, but they actually put together in a whole series. Pretty, yeah, pretty good. I'm going back to that a series I read in high school. Isaac Asimov's foundation series, his trilogy, has been made into well, a series on Apple TV. Second uh, season just came out, so I just, just finished watching that. Fascinating how they've interpreted Asimov's work and, and really modernized it. Asimov, uh, really an, an author of the 50s and so on, where right. every protagonist is male. And so foundation is the the TV version is matched and switch that up and give female characters a much stronger role. So, and played around with the plot a little bit. So quite a science fiction fan and, and that's been fun to watch. Well, White Lotus was fun. <laughs> they definitely jumped into that both season, season one and season two. And I am excited to see, I believe it's season three of Succession that's coming up. So it just Lots of different things that I'm lining up and making sure that I can uh, get some time to watch. It's just fun. I'm a Coronation Street fan, so I watch Coronation Street at the age of two because I grew up with oh Coronation goodness. I still am connected to all of the episodes. And wow. I know we're connected to Coronation Street. We have regular conversations around it. So after three water from my IQ mergers, and then I watched this really, and I did, oh, a terrible show called 90 Day Fiance. It's on the uh, 
TLC, I think. And it's about these people who meet people from overseas and then they seem to always right. have these relationships and lots of fights. But it's just really yes. normal when we're all kind of yes. you know, like real world sort of, you know, humor. And yeah, I But there's one that we just finished that I was told to watch that I didn't know was a Taylor Sheridan series. And I was hesitant to watch it because I have never been a fan of this particular actor. It stars Sylvester Stallone and it's called Tulsa King, like Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. And he is phenomenal in it. He is perfectly cast as a gangster. It is an incredibly written story. And Dean, if you haven't watched Tulsa King. I haven't. I've seen it, but I haven't watched it. Watched it. Watch it. Okay. I don't know if you're a Sly fan or not. And if you're not, I, don't I'm indifferent. That. Okay. I'm indifferent, but I, but I have watched the, I have watched all Yellowstone. I'm all caught up in Yellowstone. So yeah, I, I do have that. In the 1873 and 1923, you've watched those spinoffs? As well? No, I haven't watched those. I haven't watched those. They're very good. The 1923 one stars, stars Harrison Ford. It's excellent. Anyways, watch Tulsa. I'm a little late to the party on this one, but Ted Lasso. I've, I've been watching it, so I'm in, into the next season now, the one we, I have to wait for now. But you know why I love Ted Lasso is because I think as coaches, and you might relate to this, coaches of, of teachers, we work with teachers, we work with students, we work in virtual coaching. I'm kind of Ted Lasso around all that because, you know, how Ted, have you seen that series? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're, okay. we're actually, so so we finished season one way back when. And we're actually just in the middle of season two. So we're, we're taking it again. Okay. So, again. so how many times are we like Ted Lasso? You know, we don't know the ins and outs of everything that we're bringing to students, but it's more important right. that we're co-learners, that we learn right. alongside, that we build a team, that we relate, we're about relationships. We're, you know, yeah. So I just, I just, I, I resonate with, with Ted Lasso. So I'm enjoying that. And I watched The Light We Carry. Last night on Netflix, and which is M Michelle Obama finished her tour and, and Oprah interviewed her. And that's a book on my list. I have to get reading that one. So it was really an outstanding hour for sure. I was starting to watch Slow Horses, an Apple TV show. It's awesome. I highly recommend it if you can watch that show. It's lots of fun. Um, I just finished watching The Sopranos for the first time. And, uh, I, I, you know, when you're working and raising family. I didn't, I didn't do a lot of watching TV, but I absolutely loved it. I finished it two days ago and Interesting. I, I Well, you're like Italian. I'm, I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> so I have oh, this, yeah. you know, and I don't know how, how, how well this is going to sound, but I've always have had this fascination about the mafia because sure. they're leaders and, and you know, I, they're effective leaders and not necessarily nice leaders, but that's but, right. You know, but you know, they get like a grade four, grade five education and they. Yeah. It, yeah. When we were in Chicago, I went to the Al Capone tour or whatever. So, right. so I like to, I like to watch a lot of the, you know, like I just finished watching also the offer, which is, is the making yeah. of the Godfather. I just watched something, the, the first season of The Consultant, which was really odd. It was on Prime. Okay. Yeah. I saw was, that. I haven't yeah, watched it. It was, yeah, it was all right. It was interesting. It was, I forget the actor, but uh, he's in uh, Inglorious. Glorious Bastards? Yeah. Is that, that one, guy? That one. Yeah, that guy. Oh, yeah. And I, I, Germ I like. German guy, I was, I was called. Really, him. Yeah. But his, his, he's fantastic in his role. And essentially he comes in this video game company after, I don't know, I want to give too much away, but he comes in and kind of takes over this video game company, but he's a really sinister, dark, you know, person with kind of bizarre antics throughout, but he's, he, he has that same persona from Inglorious Bastards to some extent. <laughs>